Bonsoir. Bonsoir à tout le monde et bienvenue à l'Alliance française de Chicago. Et merci d'être venu si nombreux. So there is good evening and welcome to the Alliance française de Chicago. And I thank you very much for being here so numerously. What can I say? Uh, my name is Mary Ellen Canellan. I'm the executive director of the place for all things French, Chicago. So tonight, under the umbrella of the architecture biennial, uh, the, the only one in the world beside uh, Venice, so we're in very good company, we present Notre Dame de Paris, uh, redesigning the pa Notre, did I say Parvis or Paris? Notre Dame de Paris, and we're de redesigning the Parvis. And uh, we welcome Suzanne Eliasson and Anthony Jams. They are two urban development architects behind the Grau Agency. And Grau stands for Good Reasons to Afford Urbanism. And they will unveil the new entrance and the surrounding landscape <coughs> of our beloved Notre Dame de Paris, the medieval cathedral that is in the heart of Paris and that we almost lost in the fire of 2018. This project, I must say, is no easy feat because it is a historical site welcoming, if you can believe it, 20 million plus visitors a year. So this program is made possible in part by the Jean Bodfish Brown Memorial Fund and of course our essential support from our partners Ville Albertine, the Cité City and the French Consulate of Chicago. So nous les remercions beaucoup, so we thank them very much and now to tell you more about this is Axel Moller, our attaché culturel extraordinaire du consulat de Chicago, French consulat de Chicago. Merci beaucoup. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Alliance Française. Uh, first of all, I'd like to extend my warmest thanks to Marie-Hélène Connellan and Emile Laberge for welcoming us this evening and for their enthusiasm and renewed confidence over so many years of collaboration. So I'm Axel Muller, the cultural attaché at the French Consulate and director of the Villa Albertine in Chicago. For those who don't know it us yet, Villa Albertine is the new name of the French cultural services in the United States. Um, aiming to strengthen ties between our two countries through, among other things, a vast research residency program which was launched two years ago. Tonight is the third event organized in partnership with the Alliance Française as part of the fifth Chicago Architecture Biennial, and there will be a few more. Uh, take a look at our brochure, we can find it outside in the salon. Um, it's named, it's titled French Perspectives and uh, you can also look at Villa Albertine's website, type in French Perspectives, you'll find immediately the, the right link with all the events. Uh, tonight, uh, we are delighted to welcome Suzanne and Anthony. Uh, they were in residence in Chicago for a month in 2022, two different stays, one in February, the other one in June and July, so they had two different kind of weather in Chicago. <laughs> uh, and they explored the diversity of Chicago urban grid to reveal alternative visions of metropolitan identity. Thanks to a post-residency grant, they were able to return last week to continue their work in Chicago and Detroit. During their stay, they kindly agreed to share with us another extraordinary project they were also working on, the transformation of the Parvis de Notre-Dame. Everyone probably remembers uh, Notre-Dame on fire in April 19, and maybe also the emotions you, you, you felt at the thought of seeing this symbol and masterpiece disappear. Uh, every, and uh, major reconstruction work has begun, thanks in particular to many generous American donors, for which we're extremely grateful. Uh, among them, the French Heritage Society, uh, who is represented tonight. I saw a few members of this organization. And once again, this is an extraordinary proof of uh, our Franco-American friendship and solidarity. 
As you can imagine, it's a big responsibility to have to reinvent Notre Dame RV. And tonight, Suzanne and Anthony will give us an exclusive <coughs> insight into the thinking that led them to this magnificent project, a project that won the international competition launched to rebuild Notre Dame and its surroundings. A warm thank you, uh, Suzanne and Anthony, for being here tonight to give us a behind the scenes look at this extraordinary project in the very heart of Paris. For those who would like to know more about uh, your residency research with Lila and Bertin, you will be giving a talk at IIT on November 1st on the concept of the Garden Metropolis. Check out our website. Have a nice evening. of the cathedral, which is not what we are involved in, uh, but, but the title is still Notre Dame because uh, the work that we do on the surroundings is uh, essentially about Notre Dame, about the, um, the way uh, uh, Notre Dame stands today, about the position it has, the meaning it has, and the way redesigning the whole surroundings um, will give, of course, the continuity of what it has always been, but also hopefully uh, be able to bring in new and other ways of, of looking at it. So the subject uh, is, is uh, Notre Dame. Um, this is a, a little picture, um, little picture by Robert Doineau uh, from 1977, showing mm -hmm. Notre Dame. Um, I have to give you a little bit of, of context of the, uh, the project that we are involved in. <coughs> so as you all know, there was the, the fire of um, Notre Dame in 2019. Um, and, and right after, of course, reconstruction on the, on the cathedral uh, started, uh, it will be rebuilt identical to what it was, um, and it will be finished, um, it will open next year, December 8, uh, is, the, is the date set now, 2024. And um, because Notre Dame closed, because uh, the city knew that it would take several years before it was to reopen again, uh, they um, decided to start to reflect on how we could redesign the surroundings. <coughs> because the, the existing public spaces date from 1970, and so there was uh, places which needed refurbishment. Uh, there is also a big lack of facilities for people coming. As it's been said, it's uh, uh, millions of people come here every year. There is just a few small toilets downstairs in an area which is not easy to find. You may have been there. Uh, and so there is a lack also of, of, of facilities, of place for people to, to be there. And so the city started to think on this and decided to launch a competition, an international competition in 2021 uh, to reflect on the renovation of the whole surroundings. So the renovation of the cathedral is led by the state uh, because it's a state <coughs> building and the whole surroundings belongs to the city of Paris and so the competition is, is led by the city of Paris. And so uh, they uh, selected four uh, international teams, large scale with a lot of different competences. Every team was uh, composed of landscape designers and architects and planners. So this is uh, our team, which was one of the four teams selected for the competition with Bureau Basmet, who is a landscape designer, Belgian landscape designer, uh, team leader, Grau, which is our office. We are architects and planners based in Paris. Uh, we are also working with Neville Gaillet, who is a heritage architect specialized in, in heritage uh, and renovations. Uh, and then uh, a series of expertise of engineers, uh, sustainability, environmental design, fountain design also, because I will speak a little bit about water, lighting, security, etc. Um, and so we worked for uh, nine months on the competition. It started in October, September, October 2021. And in uh, June 2022, uh, we were selected and we, we won the competition. Um, so this was a nine month of work. You can imagine not an easy uh, task, not an easy way to enter into uh, a, such a subject. 
uh, of course, because uh, there are so many layers, uh, historical, political, cultural, etc., cetera, um, religious, of course. And um, I think one of the first questions that we asked ourselves within the teams, within the te our team was, um, what is the place uh, that Notre Dame not only has today uh, for people, but what is the place that it should have tomorrow? Uh, was the entry point, it's a big question, but it was a way for us to enter into the subject. And one of the first things that we started to do was to collect uh, iconography on Notre Dame. Uh, and there is a tremendous amount of, of work, of paintings, of, of <laughs> photographs, uh, and it's quite, uh, it's quite fascinating when you get into it because you realize how many different ways of looking at Notre Dame there are. Uh, everyone with their own sensibility, but the point of views, the way it is uh, represented is always different. And we found images dating all the way back to the 15th century up until today with, with contemporary photo, uh, photographers. So here you see a small selection. You see the first, uh, the first picture is from 1450. It's a painting by Jean Fouquet, where you see Notre Dame, and then you have, uh, you have a, a <coughs> painting, second painting, um, and then the two other ones are photographs. You have Martin Park, who is photographing Notre Dame, and who in a way also speaks about mass tourism <coughs> and, and the relationship of, of tourists also to Notre Dame. And so um, it was a very uh, interesting work for us to, to do because it, it didn't demystify Notre Dame, but it, it, it allows us to understand that the position of Notre Dame, the way it stands today, of course is a monument, uh, the way it stands, uh, but it's also quite alive. And, and the, there is an incredible diversity of point of views, of experiences that you have of Notre Dame, which was something very interesting for us to, uh, to reflect on it, and which brought us into a, a work where we really wanted to work on how you can diversify and multiply the different experiences that you have of, of Notre Dame. And, and I will get back to that. Um, the second element that was a subject, of course, of, of uh, of consideration for the team and that we looked on a lot is the, the subject of Ile de la Cité, of the island. Notre Dame stands on the island de, de la Cité, which you can see here on the, on the drawing. Um, it's, it's known as, let's say, the cradle of Paris, where it's um, possibly the origin of, of the city here, but it, it's where the first uh, uh, formations were here. You can see a, a, a drawing of, of uh, Ile de la Cité represented in 1380. So uh, you have, um, Notre Dame was built in about 200 years, from 1163 to 1345. So here you see Notre Dame on Ile de la Cité. It stands. Uh, at the time of Notre Dame being built, Ile de la Cité was a fortress island. So it was very, the main public space of Ile de la Cité was within the cathedral. People came inside of the cathedral, and it was, a, a, um, it was an island that was very concerned with safety. Uh, and you had the, the castle and the, the cannons who had their quarters who were closed to the uh, common people, and so the main public space was, uh, was Notre Dame, inside of it. Uh, here we have a second image of Ile de la Cité from 1764, so this is three centuries later, and you can see that the whole island is developed around uh, Notre Dame. Um, the island also, the shape of the island has shifted, so you have on the on the corner there, you can see, if you know, Place Dauphine, which is a triangular one, the, the island has been extended on that side, uh, and a lot of constructions around. And you have also, you can see that there is buildings compared to the previous one that have shifted, and you have right here, you can see here, this is Hotel Dieu, which is a hospital, which was built right along the Seine, okay, by, the, by the river. Um, and this is a uh, hundred years later, uh, so, uh, 1880, dramatic transformation of um, Ile de la Cité, which is due to the work of Baron Haussmann uh, and uh, Napoleon, and you can see everything almost has, has changed. It's still an island of, of power, um, but it has gone through this whole process of beautification of the city, of opening up these big arteries, um, also for military purposes, of course, but, uh, and so we can see here that the square of Notre Dame, which during the Middle Ages was very small, so you had a very vertical, um, sort of divine experience of the cathedral. Here you can see that the square is much larger, and so you have the, 
more the, the larger view, the horizontal view of, uh, of Ile de la Cité, uh, of, uh, of the cathedral. And you can also see that the shape of the island, again, is shifting on both sides. It has extended here. It has shifted here, where this is the morgue uh, to the uh, Hôtel Dieu Hospital. And then this is now, today, the current situation, 2022. Um, so you can see that in 150 years, it has not shifted that much. It has remained fairly, uh, fairly stable, let's say. Uh, and the cathedral today, as we can see, stands a little bit in isolation compared to what it was initially. So it has sort of solidified as a real monument. Of course, it needs the space because people come. There is uh, millions of people that come every year. Um, but uh, uh, there is sort of, it really stands as a monument. And there has been, there is an ongoing debate has been going on for, for decades with historians. And some people say that we should imagine to rebuild over here in order to sort of find ourselves again in the original position with the cathedral. Of course, this is impossible uh, to do. It's not even a debate in the program. There wasn't even a question of this. With all the millions of people that are coming, with all the events that the cathedral is holding, the space around it is needed. And, it, and it's not even uh, that big. And so it's interesting to see that Although when you go, if you've been to Ile de la Cité today, it has this sort of timeless quality to it. You go, you go on to Ile de la Cité and you feel like you're in a place that has never changed. That's how we feel as Parisians when we come there. And yet you can see with this, with this map that it has shifted, it has evolved all the time. But somehow the way things are designed, the way they are on Ile de la Cité makes it feel like it has always been there. <coughs> Uh, and uh, you find a lot of elements, of course, around Notre Dame, which are uh, original. This is a photograph of the archaeological crypt that is actually right underneath the, the main square in front of Notre Dame. And that houses heritage from uh, back to 2,000 years from the Gallo-Roman period that you can find today. This is a photograph that you can see of, uh, at the time of the Dieu, which is the hospital that today is next to uh, Notre Dame. It was built here on the Seine, and you can see these what called the Cagnard, where they could come with, with boats to Hôtel Dieu. Um, this is another fairly anonymous building that you find <coughs> in the Ile de la Cité. If you, if you ever walk on Ile de la Cité, you should go and see it, because it's actually a building by French modernist architect Fernand Pouillon. And if some of you know Pouillon, it's an architect who has designed very large buildings, for example, on the Quai of Marseille, and uh, um, it's a modernist architect. And in the 60s, he designed a building on Ile de la Cité, and he made essentially a pastiche, uh, a building that looked like it's from the Middle Ages. And we find that very interesting as architects to see that somehow a modernist architect come to Ile de la Cité, and decides to say, here, I'm going to blend in. I'm going to really try to blend in and be timeless. And then, of course, you have at the end of the island, uh, if some of you know it, this is the Memorial des Martyrs de la Déportation, so the memorial for the people that were deported during the Second World War. It's at the end of the island. It was built by and designed by Georges henri Pinduçon in, the, in 1962. And it's a wonderful monument. It goes at the end of the island. You go down. It's in relationship with the Seine, but also with the cathedral. And again, it has this timeless quality to it. Like it's, it's there, and it could be nowhere else but here. And so this was very interesting for us in the, in the process also to see and to try to understand this, this timeless quality and how, by adding a new layer, uh, we really wanted to inscribe ourselves in this feeling also of saying how can you make it timeless when you do it new in a way. A third element that, that guided the, the process was a work of looking at the different public spaces uh, because there's competition also of redesigning the public spaces of what structures public spaces in, in uh, Paris. And so we have this little drawing where we show this idea of a structure and then all these people that are standing under the trees this is quite uh, Parisian for us in the sense that you have every public space, there's a continuity. If you go on Ile de la Cité and you can see that there's space all around the cathedral, but there is uh, a certain specific quality to all these different spaces. The way they are structured with trees or with arcades, etc., produces different kind of, of spatial environments where you have different qualities. And so this is a drawing that we did during the competition where you can see 
of course, the structure of the cathedral inside, the way it is, the space that you have with the structure, but also the structure in the public spaces. This is a project uh, proposal, but we also did it for the existing, and you can see how exterior spaces are also structured by the tree and producing different ambiences. And this was something that we were very interested in, in, uh, in working on. So, all of these elements, the, uh, the visions, the multiple visions of, of Notre Dame, um, the quality, the timeless quality of, of Ile de la Cité, and this idea of, of spaces that have continuous relationship with each other, that have distinct qualities. These were three elements that, that guided us in the, in the process. Um, and so I'm going to show you a little bit of the, the project, what we are doing above ground, but this is something that is developed mostly by Bureau Basmet, by our landscape designer. Uh, and so I will briefly explain that project. And then I will spend a little more time on the underground, which is the, our main focus of, of work. Um, these are three drawings that show the intentions that we had with the project. Uh, the first intention that you see here is the idea to uh, give room to the cathedral. There is something that is very specific in Paris, is that the public space, uh, the way it's designed, is designed with point of views on the big monuments. And you have, uh, you have the, let's say, the visible world, which is this idea of perspectives that you find, that you have on the cathedral, that you have on La Madeleine, on all the big, Les Invalides. Uh, there's always this, this idea of creating perspectives on the monuments, uh, and these perspectives are design and clear, and these spaces are clear, only because there is also an invisible world <laughs> that takes care of the rest, whether it's the underground, whether it's the courtyards in the, in the building. And so it was very clear for us in this project that, of course, the monument is Notre Dame. Uh, and it is uh, uh, the focus that needs to be made is on Notre Dame, and the perspective that needs to be created is on Notre Dame. So the first ambition is to give as much room as possible to the cathedral and to work on the redesign of a square that is as large as possible to accommodate as many people as possible but that is better framed maybe than what is today and I will show you that after. The second uh, ambition is to multiply the visions of Notre Dame because there is a, a main focus of course on the, on the square of looking at the main facade uh, but there are, and we can see in the, the pictures that I showed you before, there are all these amazing point of views of Notre Dame everywhere. So we wanted to also to encourage the continuity of encouraging people to walk around and to have a, a multiple look of, of Notre Dame and also to create new points of views. And the third idea is that Notre Dame is part of Ile de la Cité. Ile de la Cité is a, is a museum island in a sense. There are only 800 people that live on the, on the island. And so uh, the way we design the spaces, the public spaces around Notre Dame, needs to be in mind with a continuation on the whole Ile de la Cité. And there is this natural direction on the island, which is this east-west orientation that we wanted to enhance. And so these were the three ambitions that we worked on. Here you can see the, the existing, let's say, public spaces of, of Notre Dame. So Notre Dame is here. There is the existing square in front of it. The space here that is overlooking the Seine. You have uh, a couple of gardens here. This is called the Square Jean 23, which is a garden uh, closed today. Uh, there is a street going here. And then this is the second square called Square Rue de France. And then you have the memorial uh, that I spoke about. Uh, this is the whole site that we're working on. And uh, what we decided to do was to create much more continuity uh, between the spaces, <coughs> free up as much room as possible um, because uh, so that you can walk around freely and so that you can have a clear relationship with the Seine in the, in the project, mm -hmm. um, and that work on different figures and different spaces quite distinctively. So we have, in the project, we have five different, what we public figures, uh, which are specifically designed. The first one is the square. You can see here that it has, in terms of proportion, it has the same proportions as the cathedral, the interior space. So it doubles uh, the size of the, the interior space. It's perfectly rectangular, the way it is designed. 
and uh, there are trees that are planted quite extensively all around it to turn it, to turn the square into sort of clearing. Um, and then there is going to be, there's a whole work on, of course, because Paris is getting hotter, like everywhere, there is real work on how uh, we can accommodate people, how we can create good spaces for people, but where you can also feel well when it's very hot, when <coughs> the wind is blowing, etc. And so the square, we have to keep it, of course, without the vegetation, so we can keep the perspectives, uh, but also so we can organize events. And so what we are working on is, is a system where there will be a bench at the end of the, the square, and when it's very hot, there's going to be water that is just going to sip out from the, the piazza. The whole piazza is going to be leveled a little bit. And <coughs> the water is going to run, and the effect is going to be a little bit like when it's very hot in the street in Paris, they sometimes uh, water the streets, and it has sort of an immediate cooling effect. Uh, so this is one system that we're working on to create a space where people are feeling um, comfortable even when it's very hot. And then right behind it, there is a, a sort of a little placette where we're planting quite extensively, which is today the entrance to an underground car parking, and that is uh, going to change. And so we're doing a lot of planting here, uh, and there's going to be a lot of bike storage also. And so it creates a sort of a transition between what will be the square tomorrow and what is the street here. Then there is a third figure, which is uh, an du Croix here, where we are also trying to plant quite extensively, so as to, there is a lot of wind that is going on to the street in the, in the winter, and so to stop the wind, so again, to create a sort of more comfortable climate. Um, then there is uh, the square, Jean 23 here, that is going to be extended in, a, in feeling all the way to the Seine in the back, where there is a sort of a belvedere overlooking the, the river here, and there is also work on a, on a quite a big lawn here where people can sit, where people can have a look at the cathedral from the back to really also enhance this, this new view. And then the fifth figure is this whole line here, which we, we call the Parc de Berge, which is the idea of turning the whole space here along the Seine into a big park in a way that is going to be replanted and also with lawns so people can come, can enjoy the view, can sit down and, and relax. And so it's, as you can see, it's a project that tries to, with very few means, uh, and, and at the same time by keeping as much as possible, and in terms of structure, but also in terms of, of, of feeling, etc., with very few means, try to do as much as possible. This is for the, the above level, and so you can see here the images, you see the, the future square, which is here, the effect of the sort of the clearing, that is with the planting here, here. Here we plant trees, but of course we preserve the views, have from the from the petit pont. Um, here you can see a figure where you clearly see the, the linear park that is going to be along the, the same river here. Um, third image here shows the back, so you have the square de l'île de France, where you see the back of the cathedral, the extension in a way of the of the uh, place that you that you uh, look over to the Seine, and here you can see uh, the general master plan of, of the project. And one thing that you can hardly not see uh, in, this, in this image is uh, the new future visitor center, which is the second part uh, of the competition. Um, and, and it's uh, part of the project that it's almost uh, not visible, let's say, in the way you look at it today. But if you look really closely, you can see a few small things happening here. Uh, and, and that's what I will talk a little bit more about now. Um, so the city of Paris, in addition to redesigning the exterior spaces, in the competition asked for a new place, um, sort of a visitor facility that could accommodate uh, tourists, that could create comfort for tourists coming. Um, and um, they asked all the teams to work on the possibilities of reconverting an existing underground car park that is today under the, under the piazza. Uh, we call it the vestibule. I will, I will get back to, to that title. Um, but a little reminder of what I said before, this idea that you have in Paris, you have the visible world, which is the world of the monuments, of the perspectives, etc. And then you have everything that makes that work. Uh, and the idea, which was very clear for us during the competition, and which I think is also the reason, or we know the reasons also for why we won, is that for us it was evident that the visitor center center 
was going to be part of the invisible world. There was no, uh, um, in a space that is already not so big, uh, we wanted it to disappear as much as possible. But disappear doesn't mean that we don't create connections and relationships, but not to be visible from above. Here you can see a photograph of um, in the 1970s when they designed the public spaces above uh, and when they decided to do the underground car park, they started digging and they found all these remains of the, of the city. So you have from all the way back to 2000 years, but you also have from the Middle Ages, etc. And when they found this, of course, they stopped the work. They decided to, uh, to look and inventory it and to do an archaeological crypt. So there is today this, this archaeological crypt underneath, uh, and there is a car parking. Here you can see uh, during the, the construction phase, so you have Notre Dame is here on, on this side behind us, let's say, or underneath here. Uh, you can see the, the crypt that is uh, being built here, the Seine that is, uh, that is here, and you can see the uh, structure, existing structure of the car parking that they are building. It's a two-level car parking. This is a second picture that shows next to Notre Dame. So you have the structure of the car parking, the crypt here. You have the, the, pair, the remains that you can see here. Uh, and everything is quite tightly packed, let's say. Um, the parking structure and the archaeological crypt, all of the spots designed by French architect Hermand and Jouve. Um, and André Hermand, he also wrote a book, which is called Fort Mutile, which is a book that we read during the competition. Um, quite, quite nice, quite interesting about the, the utility also of, of spaces of form. Um, and here is another photograph which was extremely important for us during the competition where you can see the construction of the car parking. So you see Notre Dame that is right behind here. Uh, and you see this is before they poured the intermediate slab. So today there is a slab here and so it's a two level car parking structure. It's completely underground so you don't see it. Uh, but we really like this photograph because um, it's just a parking structure, of course, but it has a lot of quality. It has, a, let's say, a rhythm, you can see with the pillar. It has a, a sort of a material, which is one only material, which is concrete. It has, oh, sorry, it has a, it has a certain direction, which is this east-west orientation that is really oriented along the, the Seine. Um, and it also, it's not connected to the Seine, and it's not connected to the crypt, but the crypt is right there, and the Seine is right there. And so it's really an interesting space for us, and when we were starting to think of how we can use the, the space, this was quite evident for us, that there is this figure of connection, which can become a point of articulation. An articulation between the cathedral, which is at the end, of uh, a connection with the crypt, which today is, has a separate entrance, but that in the project will be connected to this main space. A connection with the Seine on one side, and of course a connection to, to the city. And so the whole project is oriented around this idea of, of a space of articulation and of connection. Now this is a, an axonometry that shows, uh, you can see in black what is existing, and in red what is the interventions. And so. You see the whole, this is the parking structure here, existing one. This is the crypt, that is right next to it. This is the K, the K Moïse Garem, which is the Seine, and you can see the river is right there. <coughs> and so in the project, we are keeping this structure, we are keeping all the pillars. We are uh, taking away this intermediate slab, so as to again gain this volume of space. Uh, we are, of course, creating connections uh, that, that I will show to the, to the outside with two big staircases and, and two elevators, and we are connecting uh, the crypt to the, to the mm -hmm. space here and the Seine. And that's interesting because it was something that was a reflection for the architects at the time, for Hermann and Jouve, which they, they didn't, were, weren't able to make. But it's also interesting because the reason that the city is here be is because of the Seine. And so recreating this connection between the crypt and the Seine is a way to reconnect also the city with its original elements that is uh, the Seine. So just to give you a better understanding here, you can see an existing section. You see the existing parking structure, the crypt, the square of Notre Dame, in front of Notre Dame, the K and the Seine. And uh, this is what we're doing. So we are taking away one slab, creating a connection to the crypt, creating a connection to uh, the K. Um, you can see here. Uh, 
second uh, section, which is the longitudinal one, uh, where you see the cathedral, the existing car parking, and again, what we're doing, essentially a sort of a continuous promenade, that you go down uh, at, the, at the end of the square, you can walk through this space, and then you can walk up, uh, going to the cathedral. It's not going to be an entrance to the cathedral, it's a sort of a, a welcoming space with those different services, but of course then you will go outside and you will enter into the cathedral from the main gate. Um, but it's a space, let's say, of, of articulation. Um, what is interesting and what we did work a lot on was the idea that underneath, it's a, it's a quite radical transformation of the space, but on the, on the public ground, the, uh, the impact of this, what we call this vestibule, which is this element of, of transition, uh, is, is very minimal. So we only have a few articulations. You can see two great staircases that each time are oriented towards the facade of the cathedral in order to create a uh, sort of experience also of the facade. And you have uh, here uh, the two main elevators that are oriented parallel to, to the Seine. And then you have an opening on the, on the Seine that I, I will show uh, better after. And so we have this, we've, we really work with the different point of views that you have from the cathedral. There are four point of views for us that are very important to preserve, but also to, 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 or to create. The first one is the one that you have from the Petit Pont, which is the main bridge that you, most people access the Ile de la Cité from Saint-Michel, or they go over Petit Pont, and they come. And so the, the facade of the Seine here, of the quay, is very important because it's really, it's a big, let's say, plinth also for the cathedral that it stands on. And so, of course, opening this facade uh, to, the, uh, to the vestibule here was a big challenge in reflection because you want it to be open, but you also want to preserve the sort of the, the heaviness of the, of the plinth of the cathedral. So we work with openings that allow, when you're on the, on the petit pont, to maintain the kind of material of the of the, of the, of the, of the plinth. Second uh, point of view is this point of view from the parvis to the square, perfectly organized on uh, the cathedral. And then you have these two different views that I, I showed before, which is going down into the vestibule, looking at uh, Notre Dame from afar, which is, let's say, the Napoleon, the, the more uh, open vision, which is when he enlarged the square. And at the same time, when you go up, we try to recreate the idea and the image that you had 800 years ago when it was built in the medieval vision where everything was built around and you had this very vertical and um, more divine approach to the cathedral. So it's really a project that does very few things. It's a project of articulations but all the time trying to recreate new experiences. So here you see again the, the, the picture of when it was built and the project the way it's going to look tomorrow. This is from the competition. So you see the you see the pillars, the existing pillars that are remodeled. You see the, the slab is taken away. It's a big volume. You see the, the roof, which is the same as here. And you see the space of, of the vestibule that articulates the new crypt entrance here, uh, the opening to the stand here, and the, the stairs at the end. Uh, so here you can see the existing, what is the parking today, the crypt and the stand and the project, the way it is inscribed. And so it's a big space in the middle, which is open. It's not closed, it's covered, but it's not gonna be closed or isolated. And so you go down like a sort of a big passage. Uh, and then there is a series of programs that are articulated around it. So there are going to be, for example, group rooms. There is a place where you can come and get information. There is a small shop, library shop. Uh, there are toilets, lots of toilets, <laughs> both sides. Uh, the program asked for 90 toilets. There is less today, but it was the initial uh, the program. There is office space for people working, of course. There is a small cafe where you can come and sit in a relationship to the sin. And then there are places where you can go put your luggage, etc. So it's a big uh, service space. Um, and then, of course, this crypt entrance. And which is right in front of the opening to uh, the Seine. And then you can see this is underneath, this is above. You can see that everything is oriented towards the, the cathedral and you sort of disappear uh, when you mm -hmm. enter into the visible world. So
So just to show you maybe to finish a quick promenade through the, through the vestibule so that you get a better sense of it. Uh, this is so the, the, what we call the grand um, west staircase where you go uh, down uh, into the, the vestibule. And so as you start to, to go down, what's interesting is you have this view of the, of the cathedral that is disappearing slowly. And it's a reading, it's a sort of a contemporary reading of this main stone facade, what you get while, while walking down. Um, once you come down, you're in this space that is, I have to say in meters, but it's 15 meters wide by 60 meters deep. It's four meters high. And you're standing in this, this big space and you have glass facades all along on both sides that accommodate the different uh, programs. Um, there is a work that we're doing on the materiality of these pillars that we are reworking uh, in order to take away the, what we have today, which is the rough concrete, and to work on materiality that is closer to between the crypt, which is the beige stone, and, and the stone of the cathedral. And so here you can see you're standing in the space downstairs. You've come down, and you immediately orient yourself, because you have the crypt, the same, and you, you know that you can just walk up again. <coughs> and you are in a covered space, but that is still outside. So as in the summer, when it's going to be very hot, uh, you can go down, there is quite a lot of um, earth that is covered above this, this parking structure today. So it's going to be cooler when you go down, sort of a fresh refuge also in the, in the summer. Um, and then you can see, of course, the, the space is really ridden by these pillars uh, that kind of creates this direction, but every time you sort of turn your uh, view, uh, you create also different perspectives and openings through the different glass facades. Here you get a view of the, uh, the group rooms that are here, uh, that are behind glass facades. You can see the opening to the crypt with a new staircase here going up. Uh, on the other side in front, there is this on a slightly raised plateau, you access the Seine, because the Seine is a little, the K is a little bit higher, so you get this, you walk up and you have this sort of extension of the K, which is interesting because we're here at the Ile de la Cité, at the space where the Seine is the narrowest at this specific point. And, so, and the K is very small, people go down and you go up, and so the idea is really to work on extending the, the idea of the K here in a covered space where you can sit down, watch the river, have a drink, rest a little bit. Uh, and then you see here from the so from the Seine in front you have a system of openings that are designed on the existing structure of the, of the quay and with this very heavy and, and deep stone pillars that will guarantee that when you are looking from the Petit Pont you don't see the opening, you only see the stone material of this facade. Again, we are back in the, in the vestibule. This, this opening of the Seine is also very important because it allows us to bring light into the vestibule. Since we, we open very little on the top, you just have the staircases, we create new light. Of course, we complement it with artificial light. Um, here you go, and then you, you reach the end of the vestibule, and you reach this uh, staircase, which allows you to go up. And again, then, when you go up, the first thing that you see is this kind of view of of the cathedral of this stone facade, which is, in terms of proportions and perceptions, is the original view that you had in the Middle Ages. Mm -hmm. And so it's a way of, by just doing a very small thing, which is not too visible, trying to recreate this original experience. So essentially, uh, the projects and, and everything, whether it's the above, whether it's underground, um, it's a project that does not too much, but that really each time tries to articulate the spaces between each other, create new connections, the connection between the crypt and the Seine, a new perspective of the cathedral, the one that you get when you go out, the one that you get from the behind, and so <coughs> demultiplying all the different experiences that you have of the cathedral and that you will have tomorrow. Um, thank you.
Merci pour cette présentation. Ah, vraiment superbe. Uh, who does the little drawing? I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> light touch and the white, uh, the white spaces, is, they're, quite, they're very interesting, very unique. Um, so now we have the presentation, uh, we have a full house of people who are fascinated by Notre Dame de Paris. Uh, we'll probably, next time they go visit, uh, this project will probably be in place and we wonder if you have any questions. Uh, we are recording today, so before you ask your question, we ask that you wait for the microphone that Maya is going to bring to you. Uh, if not, if we don't get the microphone on time, I can definitely repeat the question as well. But um, I want to make sure they hear you. Do you want to talk just a little bit so we know the microphone are good? Okay. Testing. Vous êtes prêts pour les questions? Tous les deux? Oui, ça va? Okay. So, any questions in the full or not? Il y en a beaucoup. On va commencer par devant, puis on va aller vers derrière. That's very good. Thank you, boys for being so uh, engaged in this subject that everybody loves. So when you spoke about the water treatment in front of the cathedral, my mind kind of went to Millennium Park where we have that water treatment and all the kids playing around in the fountains and so forth. It seemed like it was a very large space and very close to the entrance. And so when I have been there, it's just been packed with lines and lines of people trying to get in to the cathedral. So are you talking about that whole space being a water treatment? It's a good question. So the, 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 the idea is, um, yes, it's not going to be like the fountain at Millennium Park, which is a wonderful place. Uh, where, you know, where, because there's water all the time, and you have the kids running around. Here, the, the purpose is um, more than a place of a recreation. It's just, it's really cooling down the surface. So it's it's only going to work when it gets really hot. So when the, the exact temperature is not set, this is ongoing uh, work, but only when it's really hot, there is going to be, so the whole square is slightly going down in terms of um, um, topography towards the cathedral. And it's just gonna sip out water from a on, from the top, and it's going to sip down. It's just like if, um, I don't know if you do it sometimes in Chicago, but in Paris they do it. They just, or the gardener who just, you know, put waters with the, no, but it's, it's a very low-tech system in the end. It puts water on the, on the street, and it cools down, and so you can walk on it. It's because it's really going to be just that. But the idea is that by just sipping water, when it's very hot, there's an instant effect of cooling down, uh, that radiates and so provides comfort for people there. And it will work even if it's packed. It's supposed to. <laughs> um, I saw so many stairs, <coughs> and I was wondering if you had any features for disabled access, like an elevator or a ramp? Yes. Uh, yeah, there, there is uh, two elevators. Uh, they are very uh, close to the parvis. Uh, you cannot see very well in the, in the, but they are between the two stairs, the big stairs. Uh, mm -hmm. But there are two big elevators for, for people to create a direct connection from the parvis to the vestibule and the quai in the sky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is in the city of Paris asks for what they call universal accessibility. So mm -hmm. it, everything needs to be accessible. And what is interesting in the project is that, of course, the, the space underneath the, the vestibule is going to be accessible. But also, um, by opening onto the Seine, the quay is becoming accessible, which is it, it is not today. You, if you you have only the stairs, so with the elevators, you will be able to also go out directly onto the cave. I was wondering, why didn't you include escalators anywhere? Because they move people faster than elevators. Also, uh, interesting to 
see the other protocol of the, the competition because uh, I think uh, it was not uh, included in the program to have elevator because it's complex escalator, escalator sorry in terms of maintenance etc and price so there are some other competitors they, they create slope also to go inside it takes a lot of space upper so uh, we, we our strategy was to go more directly in the vestibule uh, by the way of the stairs and by the way of the elevator but no no escalators and, and also maybe the, it's a uh, so this is a publicly funded project uh, there is um, there is the cathedral which is uh, refurbished with a lot of uh, money that has mm. been uh, uh, privately partly privately funded uh, and this whole redesign is funded by the city of Paris um, so there is there is not the same amount of money <laughs> in the space as in the cathedral that is one thing and there is the, the demand which is completely le legitimate of course of the city of Paris to really think and design robust spaces uh, because of all the use of the millions of people that are going to use it on a day on a yearly basis it has to be really robust and so uh, even the question of maintaining for example escalators etc is something that uh, it was not a choice by the by the city to go to go that way and so what we try to do is to work on the elevators and so that when you go down it's a scenic experience of looking at the facade when you go up but also when you go down and to make that moment where you have to go down to make it an enjoyable one in, in that sense get the beer at the ball ballpark great presentation wonderful project um, one of the questions I came to my mind uh, was that the Parvi has some nice traces of what once was the footprint of buildings that were destroyed during the Haussmann era. And I wondered if those might be preserved in your design. I couldn't tell. Thank you. Reproduce the, the design of the interior cathedral outside. It means there are tiles of uh, 60 centimeters per 60 centimeters. It's a, it's a sort of dummy, and they are trying to make it outside like a sort of uh, new space. But we, the, the, the relation to the history, we will develop it, uh, I will say, more <coughs> strongly with the vestibule and the relation. Uh, great, pre uh, great plan and very good presentation. You really brought it alive. Thank you. I have to ask this question on behalf of my dinosaur friends in Paris who still drive and park everywhere they go. So, the the elephant in the room is: oh, Is there any provision for alternate parking? I, because I know they're going to ask me. Because I'm going to say, there's this wonderful design. Like, oh, mais ça là, il n'y a plus de place pour les voitures. So what can I tell them? Well, you can tell them that on, in the La Cité there is a lot of room because they, what they did, they had no intention of doing this in the beginning. It just they had to close the parking the day after the fire because of the, the uh, lead issue and, and things. So they closed everything. And then when they closed it off, they, they realized that, well, there wasn't really a demand for it. First of all, there was no complaint, not a single complaint that it was being closed. And then they did an inventory on the island, and there is a lot of underground parking on the island. There is a lot of parking spaces, and there is a lot of free one on the island that is not occupied. And so that's how they got the idea to say, maybe we don't actually need this parking space, because in other districts, of course, there is a big parking problem. <laughs> but on the La Cité, there isn't. And so... You can tell them that they can park in many other underground car parks. <laughs> so I'm, I'm curious about the, uh, the way you approached, if you could talk a little bit more about the illumination, the lighting. Um, what percent of daylight uh, were you able to capture? Because it's, it's a very interesting space where 
um, you approach it, you expressed the um, the interior, you know, the underground, the visible, and the invisibles, and then you expressed your your project essentially centers around the invisible. And I don't know if you were able to, uh, in your stay in Chicago, if you were able to explore Lower Wacker Drive, because during the Prohibition <laughs> era, there's, there's an entire underground city. And when I saw your drawings, um, I immediately, you know, correlated it with the underground city of Chicago and the pedways underneath um, the city of Chicago, like in the loop. So then how much uh, daylight were you able to incorporate in your design? And what percent of daylight versus artificial lighting were you able to use? Uh, so the, the, the lighting is, of course, I mean, it, it's an extremely important part of the project. What you see here are competition pictures. Um, and we are now working uh, much more specifically on the question of light. Um, we call the underground the vestibule, because uh, the vestibule is a, in architecture is a sort of space of transition that articulates. It's the place that prepares you to visit. You go into a vestibule before you go into someone's home, etc. And and we see that space as as a place where you prepare to visit the crypt, you prepare to visit the cathedral. It's a space of transition. But we also call it the vestibule because uh, a vestibule is a, is a decorated space, generally. It has a certain uh, uh, element of decoration. It has a certain uh, focus on lightning. And it's just, generally, it's not just lit like an underground car park or like a commercial shopping center or something. And so by, by using that world, what we're working also with the city is to define really a, a lighting quality to, to the vestibule. So what you see in the image here is a very homogeneous lighting, and, and currently we're working on something where you could uh, you really use lighting also as a way of, of decorating the space, of working with the space, of having <coughs> sometimes lighter areas, sometimes a little less light, and to really work with that aspect, because it's for sure that the natural light, when it's in the middle of the day, it's really going to sip in from the same, uh, but when it's later or in the morning, and depending on the spaces, we are going to need artificial lighting. And that was a real, it was a choice to say we, we really work with the underground. But you have, historically, there are all these uh, examples of vestibules. You have Michelangelo vestibules that have de been designed where there is almost no natural light, <laughs> none in some places, but there is work on the light, and it's this theatrical, fantastic space. And so it's, it's really that direction that we're trying to, to push this idea that the, that the lack of natural light is not a disadvantage, but that we actually play with it. Is you done? Okay. Just one more slide. First of all, congratulations. You're both young, and I can imagine that uh, landing this project is kind of the opportunity of a lifetime. And I was just curious, um, what you enjoyed the most about it, and you know, did it change your life in some way? Normally, we enjoy to work outside the city. It's our, I mean, it's our job to work uh, where the city is big, etc. And uh, uh, it's maybe our specialty. Uh, and here it's for us uh, um, very interesting to work in the completely center of Paris. Our office is not so far, so we are quite familiar, familiar with this landscape, but we are really discovering it every day now, so it's very, uh, it's very fantastic. But maybe the, the most fascinating for us, it, uh, it was the relation to the history that we really found in the, in the, in the ground say that we always try to find outside the city and to find a piece of uh, interesting things for people to, see, to, to, to live together. But here it's so amazing the relation with the crypt, with the cathedral, with the Seine River. So you just have to connect things. So uh, of course the, the, the picture of the vestibule are quite brutal for the moment. We will work on it. But we are just uh, articulate space with the existing ex uh, car parking. So it's uh, uh, for us quite fascinating to uh, to to connect this um, different time and different uh, mm -hmm. uh, space. But it's this work is not so um, uh, different 
from what we are doing outside the city, I would say, in terms of landscape, in terms also of uh, architecture. And here we are working on, <coughs> so the, the Bureau of Asmet, they are working on the, on the public space, and the landscape, and the, the party, etc. And the architects are working more under the, the ground. So there is a, a very, I would say, also um, a balance and a, a play between the landscape architect and between the architect together. So it's a very, it's a very interesting project also for that. I, th I think also that what is um, the relationship of history in, in different dimensions, because there is the cathedral, and as Parisians, for us, we never went. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> <laughs> too much tourists, sorry. <laughs> and, and, but, and, and now and we go, and it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful monument. <laughs> you know, but, like, but, but also the, even the parking structure, uh, because I think we're at, at, at a time now, at, probably at least in Europe, and I would imagine it's the same here, where uh, we are starting to wonder what about the heritage of the 20th century. Uh, and there are places where we see no quality today, which of course in 50 years it will be the new, you know, the industrial buildings that we share is so much in terms of reconversion. And, and this parking structure is, is also, it for us, it's a very basic space, of course. But it's all these concrete that has been poured into the ground and it's there and you, it's so malleable and you can do so much with it. Mm -hmm. And so it's also an opportunity for us to kind of reflect on that potential of the of what we have been built, what we don't see as heritage today, but that can become that tomorrow. And so to operate that transition between a parking space, which is dedicated to the car, to turn it into a sort of interior promenade for people walking, for being, it's also, um, it's an aspect, of course, we knew of when we did, the, we did the competition. It was a choice to work with this transition, but it's something, I think, we're quite interesting for us now to reflect on this idea of what is also heritage here. And, and maybe just one thing that we wanted to keep is also uh, we observe people coming to the party, etc. And, and uh, directly they have a sort of smile in their face and they are really happy. You can see that people are uh, kissing uh, together, etc. So it's a very specific moment because the light is very specific. There's the Seine River. So this, uh, I would say, it's a, uh, a place with a lot of quality for people. So we wanted to keep that. So that's why also we decided to not play too much with this space and try to just uh, uh, go uh, under the, the, the ground and let this situation with the lights, yeah, this yeah. extraordinary lights, I would say, and to invent something new under. It's the challenge of the, of the, of the project. Oh, well, okay. I think I can talk loud enough. <laughs> I'll give you the question. the nature of the trees that are planted, what materials will, because for us in the U.S., for me, parking structure symbolizes concrete, rusting, you know, after a few years it doesn't look that great. Que sont les matériaux que vous avez choisi aussi, you know, for the, the columns, the, I don't know. Que sont les matériaux choisis pour les colonnes? Oh no, I'm in French, okay. Wow. Uh, what are the material you chose for the column in, inside? Uh, would that be like any old parking lot that gets all rusty? Uh, that a specific uh, take on this. C'est ça? It's a very good question. We are, we are actually, no, 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 it's a very good question and we are actually, we have to find right now, I would say, we have different also hypotheses. Uh, it's a place with a lot of people, so we need something quite uh, robust also, but mm -hmm. we want to find something also uh, um, very soft. Mm -hmm. And really, uh, um, I would say that uh, we can uh, see that a uh, uh, human can uh, uh, be in this space, which is not always the case of the concrete, even if concrete is, is of course, interesting. But we are working on uh, right now. <laughs> to, to give an idea, but still, it's, it's, uh, it's not going to be the concrete that is. That was something that during the competition we had the discussions with the city and say, okay, we will tell you, but you can't, it can't be rough concrete. And so the idea is that uh, we rework the pillars for now. The, the hypothesis is sort of a mineral coating, which is, has to be clearly defined. 
but which is very robust if it's a, um, applied traditionally. And so also has movement when it's worked traditionally. And then the, the whole floor is going to be a new floor because we had to pour a new slab. So we're working with hypothesis on stones on that. And the only thing that is we're keeping is the, uh, the beams on the roof. But they're going to be sandblasted. And so, and you can see today in the concrete that there is quite a lot of big aggregates. So the hypothesis, and we still have tests to operate uh, that now in the common phases, but is that you get a quality by sandblasting them, which will be close to, in terms of color, which will go close to the mineral coating. But the idea is to, we work with not too many things, try to keep the, the legibility of the structure, but making the kind of roughness of the parking structure concrete, which we really, added is what you present as an image, yeah. you have it. <laughs> we move that uh, towards something that is uh, palpable, where we have texture, we have we have also sort of more beige than gray. Um, but it's a really a, a work in, in progress, and it's uh, uh, we have to work on the composition precisely. And then with a lovely artist in Paris, there's always room for inclusion with yeah. art, right? Absolutely. That always uh, blossoms, yeah. Hi, I, I'm sorry, uh, maybe I, I'm going to ask it uh, in French because my English is not very... Go for it, go for it. One in French, we have the right to, right? <laughs> I can. <laughs> so, uh, bonjour, merci pour votre présentation. Donc, je voulais moi, voir uh, l'interaction en fait, entre le, le parvis et uh, les plafonds de, du vestibule. Alors, je parle en fait plutôt pour la partie euh, arbre que vous avez présentée en fait au débat, pour savoir en fait euh, où s'intégrer en fait la, la partie de la, fosse, de la fosse et où vous allez, euh, je n'ai pas le détail en fait de la structure du bâtiment, à savoir comment intégrer euh, tous les arbres côté scène. Ok, so this is about how the trees on the scène side integrate to the roof of the family building. It's a technical question to, to put uh, trees uh, uh, above the, the parking, but uh, mm -hmm. the landscape architect. Uh, yeah, yeah the, there is two meter round. Yeah, the it depends. Sometimes it's two meters, sometimes it's less. But uh, there is also <coughs> the, the bent roof of the, of the car park. So we need to change also the, uh, the, the how do you say that? The, the water barrier? Yeah. We're changing the water barrier. So oh there is a specific okay. moment here, yeah. but uh, yeah. you know, under the parvis, there is directly the crypt. So mm -hmm. the, the question of the deepness of the ground is uh, crucial, but sometimes there is a, a I would say, a, a, a Two meters yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it clear? No. So there is already there is soil today, and so it is enough to plant more. And there are existing trees today uh, in some places. Yes, because I heard many times in Paris that uh, it's a real problem to, to add trees as mm -hmm. uh, my uh, as, uh, wish for the city. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Maya, il y a une autre question devant. À moins que quelqu'un d'autre derrière, on va venir devant. Okay. Merci de votre présentation. Quels sont les plans pour l'hôtel Dieu Parce que c'est un, c'est un immeuble magnifique. What are the plans for the hospital hôtel Dieu, which is right beside Notre Dame Actually, we don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but there are, there are, uh, uh, it's, uh, and there is a, uh, yeah, a project now on it, but uh, uh, we don't know exactly what is uh, going on. Yes, yes, it, half of it was the hospital, and the part that was overlooking the Notre Dame Square uh, was up until very recently, um, there was a project being developed multiple so laboratories but also places for the public but it has stopped that project it has halted so um, half of the Hotel Dieu is 
currently it's unknown. Mm -hmm. we, we, we don't know. But the half of this guy is being renovated as a hospital. Monsieur Dame, peut-être une dernière question, if someone has one. Uh, okay, I'll return to Madame. Thank you. Um, the last time I was in Paris was in 2012. And at that time, if you would go to the square in front of Notre Dame, you would see all kinds of, you know, street theater and you know uh, they had all these skateboarders that were doing all kinds of gymnastic things and you know it, it was a very vibrant space um and you know people were collecting tips and you know but it just it, uh, crowds were there uh you know in the evenings so i was wondering if with your redesign you imagine that it will continue to have that function or <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> no, no, I, I mean, it's, uh, there is as much room in the project tomorrow as the, there is today, in terms of surf, open surface. In the, in the actual material of the... Yes. Uh, and the idea is hopefully the usage will be intensified because we're providing also more shading, more spaces where you're... Uh, because the kind of scene that you describe, I mean, with the, the, the hot days that we have in the summer now uh, in Paris, where it sometimes goes above 40, uh, that's difficult at <laughs> that mm -hmm. time. So the idea is really also to, uh, I mean, it will move around probably depending on the climate and the, the hour of the day, etc. But the idea is that, yes, we, we can have even more space for that tomorrow. Thanks. Okay, merci everybody. First, thank you to our partner, the Villa Albertine, uh, uh, the Jean Memorial Fund. Uh, there's more architecture coming up, just to let you know that the symposium on contemporary French architecture keeps going with the two next talks on November 2nd and November 9th. And this Monday, if you're interested by some of the painting uh, around by the uh, outsider artist Maurice Soulis, Soulens, who's from Chicago, started to train at 60, never went to Paris, but was obsessed with the Tour Eiffel. So we're having the opening with a talk between the gallery owner, uh, Tiffany uh, Babinet, and uh, Deborah Kerr, who's the director of the Intuit Museum. And they will talk about art brut, art naïf, outsider art, and uh, establish some parallel between what's going on in Chicago and Paris. So that's on Monday at 6.30 with the free admission. So we hope he'll be there again. Mais en attendant, merci beaucoup à tout le monde d'avoir été avec nous. Merci.